If you characterise spring, you get lovely sunny days like today, we're sitting in a t-shirt. At seven o'clock tonight, it'll be freezing cold and we may have grass frost by tomorrow morning. So you're getting you know, warm days, cold knives. So although Mother Nature is, you know, the fish will definitely be responding to that and light levels have increased, it's bright, um, but the water temperature is still cold. Some of the very best carp baits straight off the supermarket shelf. Sweet corn is quite salty. Bread is quite salty. Now people say bread's not salty, but actually if you look at the salt content of bread, it's some, of, some breads that you buy from the supermarket are more salty than ready salty crisps. If you're that little parasite on the fish's flank and you get rammed into clay, it could just suck you straight off, but it will certainly clag up your ability to breathe and then you've let go. Well, Simon, I don't know about you, but I am rather glad to be sat in your garden with bright blue skies surrounding us. I've been laid up for most of the winter, not fishing. I know you've been out yourself, um, but for me, I can't help but feel like my injuries have disappeared just in time because it's, what, 17 degrees today? Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I, I've been lucky enough to get my string pulled a few times, particularly in December, but um, yeah, the spring sunshine, the daffodils are coming out, snowdrops are just about past now. You really feel that you know, we've turned a corner. I know it's late February and we're filming this on a blistering, lovely day, but you know, it, it's, it's spring has arrived. Yes, and we can only hope that this, this stays because you step outside now and it's not cold, is it? Well, it, we're in t shirts now, t -shirt but work. it's cold at night, isn't it? Yes, and that's so one of the first questions, and we, we went over this in the winter section. Um, the warming that's also to do with daylight hours, daytime temperatures. So, how quickly are the daytime, or sorry, the daylight hours now increasing? You know, at what rate? Okay, good. Oh, that's a really good question. So, at the moment, they're increasing quite quickly. So, you, and we're, we're we're very aware of that. So, you know, you're driving back from work and you think, oh, last week it was still dark. It's getting light now. The, we're at the point. So, the shortest day is. Um, in the uh, latter half of December, around the 22nd, 23rd of December. Um, and the longest day is in the middle of June, late June, 22nd, 21st, 22nd of June. So you've got that period um, in the middle now where the, the, the daylight is increasing very quickly every day. Um, and obviously Mother Nature is very finely tuned into that and, and so are the fish. So although we're getting some cold nighttime temperatures um, and you know spring, you could, if you characterise spring you get lovely sunny days like today we're sitting in a t-shirt at seven o'clock tonight it'll be freezing cold and we may have grass frost by tomorrow morning. Um, so you're getting you know warm days Cold night. Cold night. Um, so although Mother Nature is, you know, the fish will definitely be responding to that, and light levels have increased. It's bright, um, but the water temperature is still cold. And we take today. We're sitting here. I'm in a t-shirt. So yourself. Um, it feels lovely to be outside. However, water temperatures are still about eight degrees. Now, for a carp, which as I think we spoke about in the winter issue of sopography. Um, for a carp that originated in a warmer part of the planet than we are now, eight degrees is still cold water. So for, a, for the, our quarry, they are still probably thinking they'd like it to be a bit warmer. Uh, and that, that plays into a lot of what I think we're going to talk about in, in this piece today. Yes, yeah, so um, one question I have from you, and you know the nice thing about this is I get to look at all my fishing over the years and you pick examples. So classic day in February, shallow part of the lake, feel to bring with carp. May not, most people probably don't expect them to head yeah. like they do, but you can literally find a massive percentage of the carp yeah. all stacked up in this sort of yeah. depth of water. Now that's a, that's, that's a great point. Uh, one thing that, I mean, we go outside, you can feel when it's warm, it's when it's cold, but a carp is very finely tuned to its environment and half a degree difference is significant to a fish. Yep. So the carp will get into a warm patch of water if they can. Now, bizarrely, even in the tanks at VS Fisheries, we see that. So there's some of those blue tanks which we've seen in the past. If the sun is shining on a bright sunny day in February, some of those tanks get illuminated by the sun and believe it or not, even in that stressful environment in a blue holding tank, all the fish will be in a little section that's yep. brightly lit by the sunlight. And that's not because they like sitting there in the bright sunshine, they're sitting there because it's fractionally, fractionally warmer. Uh, so they want to make the most of any opportunity to get warm. So at this time of year, particularly if you're fishing short sessions, think, right, where is the warmest place on the lake? That's where I need to go, yep. 100%. And on the flip side, so they, you know, they go into this bay in the daytime, it was very sunny, it's yep. lovely, maybe a reed bed, they go and sit yep. inside a reed bed. At what point do they then leave? Because once it gets cold, yeah. you know, t minus two at night, maybe. Yeah. 
you don't, you know. As soon as that light level starts to drop, as you know, you're sitting in the garden. If they're you're gone. sat in full sunlight now, you'd feel comfortable. As soon as that sun's gone below the horizon, the air temperature starts to drop and you'll think, oh, I'm going to go inside and get a coat. And it'd be the same with the fish. So now they might be sitting right up on the surface in the snags uh, or in a reed bed, particularly if it's south facing, trying to get the most of any warmth that they possibly can. As soon as that light level starts to drop, they'll be, they'll be you know, leaving the surface layers and heading down into, into slightly deeper water. And remember that when weather like we've got now, where we've hardly got any wind, the surface layers warm up, the water further down doesn't. What we need is some warm weather and some wind to mix the whole thing yes. over. And that was going to be another question. So, lovely warm day, freezing cold night. Yeah. How does a lake have, go through that transition period when it's being warmed in the day, but just as quickly it's being cooled back down at night? Yeah. You know, very, very slowly. We need the wind. And you can feel that. If